market for virtual reality is the gaming and entertainment industry. The biggest market potential for virtual reality is education. Virtual reality is considered to be a strong prospect in revolutionizing academia. Yet what are the side effects that come with innovating faster than the speed of change? I think it's time we do a reality check on virtual reality. My name is Roshana Weersinga. I work in consumer technology. I'm an adjunct faculty member, and I'm an emerging technologies researcher. Often I pose the question, how are these different facets related? What I'll tell you is everything I do is rooted in the human experience, be it different types of experiences. Working in technology, I care about the customer experience. As a faculty member, I care about the student experience. And as a researcher, I care about the gaps in our experiences. Today, I want to ground this in how we're thinking about virtual reality in the context of education. I'll take a two-pronged approach to sharing my findings. First, we'll cover the current climate of virtual reality in education. And secondarily, I'll share my own research findings measuring the impact of virtual reality in the classroom. These perspectives in tandem will provide us with a holistic view of where we currently stand and where we're headed. So let's start by setting the stage. What is virtual reality? Virtual reality sits within the umbrella term of extended reality, which encompasses interactive technologies that enable a fully immersive experience for users. Virtual reality breaks out into two segments, augmented reality, AR, and virtual reality, for the purposes of this talk, we'll focus on virtual reality, which is a 3D computer simulated environment that creates sensorial experiences for users through sounds, images, and graphs, all to reproduce real world scenarios. So now that we know what virtual reality is, why do we care about it in the classroom? American educator Edgar Dale's study shows that after two weeks, People remember 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, and 90% of what they do or experience. To put this in context in the classroom, it's the difference between statically reading about a moment in history through a textbook versus dynamically immersing yourself in an environment that allows you to experience that moment in history. So I'll share a personal anecdote with you. Right at the height of the pandemic, in the spring of 2021, I took a course offered in virtual reality. All students were sent virtual reality headsets, and after a couple weeks of onboarding, we were meeting in a VR classroom. What does that mean? Well, as we were logging onto class through our laptops, we would put on these heavy head-mounted devices, select an avatar, name our avatar, customize our avatar, and then join class. To make the picture for you, I could make direct eye contact with the classmate. I could whisper to the neighbor next to me. I could high five my peer in front of me. I mean, it was a breath of fresh air. It was a remarkably refreshing experience because of the closest we had all felt to a classroom in over a year. And this right here is the value add of this technology. It's the opportunity to provide users experiences that transcend our own physical reality. So naturally, galvanized by this technology, I decided to pursue research in the field. My research was founded upon the existing gap of knowledge related to how virtual reality impacts student learning outcomes, how it impacts student-to-student -student and student-to-teacher relationships, and how it can be seamlessly integrated into the classroom. More specifically, my research focused on measuring virtual reality's impact on student learning outcomes by measuring certain indicators, like participation, engagement, So with the help of some wonderful faculty 
members and support of my institution. In the fall of 2022, I drummed up an experimental plan and began research on a pilot course titled Intro to Emerging Technologies. It was a beta class comprised of about 15 students who were all sent meta-oculus headsets to join class. My research included both qualitative and quantitative methods. We used a qualitative approach to measure engagement and empathy, and a quantitative approach to measure participation. Research to expand over the course of the entirety of a semester, so approximately 14 weeks, in which students were all sent virtual reality headsets, and we issued surveys on a bi-weekly cadence to gather data and assess their comfortability with the technology. So let's jump into the findings. Starting off with student insights, positives. Students shared that it was easier to concentrate in VR. And all students felt that virtual reality positively impacted their classroom experience. Many also shared that they found it enhanced certain aspects of the classroom, like public speaking and giving a presentation. One student shared that they preferred learning in VR over web conferencing platform and feel far less intimidated by this technology over the course of the semester, much more interested in it. Now to the limitations. The first one being software related <coughs> drawbacks, such as glitches, the headset, or difficulties putting it on. Another one being health related drawbacks, such as eye strain, dizziness, nausea, cause for prolonged wear. One student shared, quote, I know the virtual reality in the workplace far from being a reality. Headsets are not fully developed yet, and mainstream headsets are not good enough. A couple more numbers to share with you. 60% of students felt more empathetic in a classroom in VR. 90% felt that virtual reality improved their engagement in the classroom, and 100% of students felt that virtual reality improved participation in the classroom. These numbers are huge, as these three indicators alone are very important components to the student experience. Finally, when asked if students would retake another course in virtual reality, if presented the opportunity to do so, 100% of students did this. Now let's jump to the other side of the classroom. What were the professor's findings and insights? This course was taught by seasoned technologist Professor Loretti. He studies technology, he teaches technology, he works in technology. Most notably, despite his own comfortability with technology, Loretti shared how virtual reality can disadvantage faculty members with less technical experience in maintaining the composure of a classroom. He also found that his class discussions in virtual reality were successful, but deemed class lectures in VR to be less impactful, as he found students would get distracted by all the features and, and not pay full attention. Thus, he preferred to use virtual reality to enhance a particular topic of discussion rather than as a general means of communication. Loretta's final point is, quote, if headsets are made cheaper, and of higher quality, I can see it replacing online learning. So now that we know we're both sides of the classroom standard of technology, and generally speaking, the findings are fairly symmetrical, let's zoom back out to where we are present day. Within the education ecosystem, we commonly consider inequities related to digitalization, resources, accessibility, an additional, typically overlooked, systemic disparities is the skill gap. The skill gap is about the distance forming between humanity and technology. Mm -hmm. As too often, we build technologies with implementation and training of the user as an afterthought. And so the question remains, how are members 
members of educational institutions equipped to withstand the everlasting changes rising as a result of technological advancements. It starts with empowerment. We must empower our educators to embrace these technologies as tools. As sometimes we find that we reject these technologies rather than accept them. And there is a tendency to feel that we are losing our humanity to technology, and that in some ways our humanity is deprecating as we give up our skills and passions to technology. And this way of thinking constitutes a failure of imagination, as virtual reality is an invitation to improve. It's an invitation to improve education. It's an invitation to redefine this practice of work. And so with this new era, the integration of virtual reality in the classroom is no longer a topic of discussion. It's a matter of execution. And by focusing on making technology more human, we can humanize what we learn through technology. And so I'll leave you with, we must be evolutionary as we create technologies that are revolutionary. Thank you.